Hi, and welcome to this video. This time in English was just really unusual for me because like 99% of all the videos that I do are in German. So it might be a special treat for some people and they might be wishing I were speaking German again. But I'm here today with Hannah Brötter and we're gonna talk about um, the warm letter. Welcome, Hannah. Thank you, Shailia. So Hannah, could you start off by telling our listeners who you are, where you live, what you do, and which clients that you work with. That's a lot. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> yes, I'm a Norwegian graphic designer and visual brand strategist. And I live in Sweden. Mm -hmm. um, and I work with uh, entrepreneurs like yourself and other of the same kind. So, mm -hmm. um, and um, yes, that's, I have my business in Sweden now. So, mm -hmm. Very cool. And Hannah is a, cl a client of mine, a long-term client of mine. And I also, I'm a client of Hannah's. She's done all of my, all of my visual branding for the virtual coach, for the successful solopreneur, for our beyond program. So Hannah and I, we know each other pretty darn well. And I am one of the recipients of Hannah's so-called warm letter. And since we're in this month of the, on the subject of the keep in touch strategy, so how to keep in touch with potential clients, uh, corporation partners, and influencers in your market, I really wanted to talk um, and focus on some methodologies that might be considered a little bit more old school because they're actually on paper. They get sent out via the snail mail but that I think are very effective for a lot of reasons, which I hope we'll get to talk about during this interview. And also that I like because, you know, when, when some people are getting started out in the marketplace as, as an expert or a solopreneur, they maybe not have a grasp yet on all of the more complicated internet technologies from email marketing systems to um, how to use different social media platforms. And they, even if they do have a grasp of those technolo technologies, they may not have a big list of people that they can send it um, out to, the, so content out to. So I think the warm letter is a really good place to start because it is something you can do if you're just starting out and if you have no knowledge of the technical or skills of online marketing and if you have no list. So let's get started and um, talk about the warm letter. In German, we would say the der warme Brief. <laughs> so, Hannah, in your in your understanding, like, how do you see what the warm letter is? What is the, what is the warm letter for you? Uh, to me, um, a warm letter is uh, a newsletter on paper mm -hmm. uh, that I make myself and send out in old-fashioned envelopes. Actually, I have always been very uh, happy about writing uh, cards and letters to people, and my warm letter list started out actually from being the list of people that I would send my Christmas cards to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And when I started doing my warm letter, which I don't send out anymore because right I've got a, you know, bigger market, email marketing list by now, but mm -hmm. I used to send it for many years. Yep. I started with um, the people who had mentioned at some point along the way that they might be interested in working with me. Um, particularly in the beginning when I had started my coach training and my trainer's training, I was telling everybody how excited I was about um, coaching and what it could do for people and inevitably when I would talk to people they would be like oh that sounds interesting well, maybe that'd be something for me at some point so my warm letter list started with th those people who had kind of said well maybe that would be something for me at some point mm. um, also the people who had I had on my list Hannah were the people who had signed up for a get acquainted call with me to see if we wanted to work together but who wasn't ready to commit uh, but didn't also say no. So they said may maybe, or they might look to do it, pursue it in the future. Hmm. Those are the people on my warm letter list. And I also included um, people, for example, who were previous clients. who I just wanted to keep in touch with um, on that sort of way. Yep. Who, who exactly do you send your warm letter out to now, now that it's probably grown beyond your previous, your previous <laughs> Christmas card list that you had? Yes. <laughs> um, I send my, my, my warm letters to a list of about 150 persons at this time. Yeah. And they are uh, a mix of my clients and contacts and acquaintances. And, you know, you meet people on uh, 
networking events and such things and you get along really well and then you get their card and if the if the snail mail address is on the card then I will add them to my my warm letter list yeah I also send to old colleagues back in Norway to keep them updated about what I do and hopefully I hope that they can pass my pass my news on to others yeah. and also I send it to friends and and family and um uh, my warm letters actually go out in uh, three languages because um, uh, I, I am situated where I am. I, obviously, I have to do the Norwegian part because I'm Norwegian. Yeah. And uh, I also have a, to do a Swedish, um, I do a Swedish letter because I live in Sweden. And then I also have many contacts um, uh, on a global basis that uh, speak English. So um, I will do one for them as well. Okay. Like you like you <laughs> the same as me so kind of what so you said it's sort of like a newsletter on paper mm. and maybe it'd be interesting for the people who are listening and watching today to find out well how is it different than your regular email newsletter that you sent out like what's different about this uh, printed paper email newsletter that you sent out to those people that you just mentioned it's more like a magazine um you know and it's not um it's not that yeah, you know, it's not that uh, news news ish <laughs> because uh, the the email newsletter goes out uh, every second or third week, so then I can be much more up to date. But uh, uh, I send my warm letter uh, once every second month, mm -hmm. so it will be more like you know a kind of report of what I have done in the last two months, if I have done anything interesting, and and so forth. So it's a slower kind of. Uh, um, of uh, communication than the, than the email newsletter and uh, of course uh, the fact that you get it in an envelope and take it out and help hold it in your hand uh, I think that uh, people they, it will live longer because people can put it on their fridge <laughs> yeah. yeah and uh, and uh, so they, they have I think they have somewhat longer lives than the email newsletter mm -hmm. yeah that's true. And I think in, in a day and age where we, we get so many digital impulses and information via email and via social media, yeah. it's just like a, a nice um, recognition to be on someone's warm letter list and get an actual letter that you know they put together for you, print it out, sign the, their name, literally put a stamp on to send to you. I mean, it makes yeah. Mm. It makes a big impression. I always feel like it's a big impression when I get it because I get your, your warm letter. Mm. And I save them every single month. I have a folder that says Hannah's name on it and I put them <laughs> in the folder. Mm. I always read them front and back. And what, what I noticed about your, about your newsletter, Hannah, is that you do a lot of different things. So sometimes I see you featuring clients who you've worked with. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I see you highlighting um, corporations, partners. I see you highlighting places where you went to speak. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, sometimes you make uh, book recommendations. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes there's things in there that are business related. Sometimes there are things in there that are more personal nature. Yeah. So how do you go about coming up with the content that you put into that to that magazine like Worm Letter, and and what are you trying? What is the purpose? Like what are you trying to achieve with with the content? Um, actually, I do in the beginning of the year, I always make uh, folders on my Mac uh, with the month of when I know that I will have the warm letter go out. So I have a, a, a folder for each month mm -hmm. and um, or, or each time because my it goes out every second month. So this year it will be six warm letters. And um, and uh, I, when I'm uh, doing other things like working or reading or speaking with people or, or something like that, I, I make a note of, uh, of, of ideas mm -hmm. uh, to, for myself and I just very quickly put it into the, to the folder that, uh, that is for the uh, next newsletter or, or perhaps the next warm letter or something like that. So I, I don't really sit down and uh, scratch my head for hours to come up with a content it's more like I'm gathering uh, um, along the way 
And so when I think of the next warm letter, I think what I have I done in the, the last two months that maybe would have some interest uh, and, you know, with good images and that seems like it's, it's very near, it's personal, but um, it, it, it's about my business um, uh, anyway. So, so uh, I always have these, these letters very uh, <laughs> top of mind. So yeah. I, can, uh, I think I can, this can go for the June letter, this can be fine for the August letter. So I, I uh, save up the content and when the time comes, I just have to, you know, fill out the columns because I have this, like you mentioned, I have uh, um, the first page is uh, somewhat uh, uh, news, <laughs> it's yeah. news about me and my business and then on the back side uh, on, uh, I have uh, uh, one I feature one person it could be a customer or a client or it could be a helper like I have featured my Swedish translator my VA has been in the, <laughs> in the yeah. warm meter and um, and many of my clients of course has been in this column and then I have the book column because uh, I am I'm very fond of reading and I've read many books mm -hmm. and um, sometimes I want to tell people about them and then uh, it's very good to have this uh, column where I can speak about the book and recommend it and you know I give the URL to the to Amazon and so forth so it's not the books on design because no <laughs> no one would read them but uh, I try to to speak about uh, books that uh, will be have some kind of value for ordinary people so it's uh, many different kinds of books in in the col book column yeah <laughs> Yeah, that's a really good thing because, you know, if, if someone is you know, currently not interested in the, the up-to-date topic about your business, there's something of value for them anyway that they can maybe, mm -hmm. maybe relate to. And for me, I think the, the warm letter when, when I used to do it was all about just educating people about what I do in my business, mm -hmm. showing them the kind of person that I work with so they could either identify with that themselves or they could recommend that to someone who they may know that it would come into question for, mm -hmm. uh, but also just keeping people up to date about, you know, what's going on in the business and, and kind of having that personal note, but also um, kind of creating uh, sort of, well, it's called the warm letter because you're warming people up, you know, so you're keeping, you're keeping them warm, you're keeping top of mind with them, but it also gives you, you the opportunity if you wanted to call, for example, someone and touch base with them, mm -hmm. it's not like you haven't spoken to them for a year um, because they're going to feel like you've been keeping touch the whole time. So it's not going to be such a surprise when you follow up with a Skype conversation or with a telephone conversation or whatever way that that, that would be. Yeah. Let's have a look at the, the letters because we're talking ab very abstractly about them. <laughs> Sorry. Mm -hmm. This one is from February last year. Yep. I don't know if you can see it. Yep. And uh, the news the warm letter is actually called on paper because. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. And here I am with my colleague, or she is my buddy, <laughs> and we always uh, have this uh, booth together on a trade fair. Yeah. So uh, here we are in our booth with the, our roll-ups in behind, and then I will I have written something about uh, this fair. Uh, it's an annual thing. Local locally here in the area yeah. and on the back side I have my client Tova yeah. and here's the logo that I made for her yeah. and also here's the book column so this this time it was a book about uh, working environments it called the moose on the table and it's very easily read and very entertaining and very very valuable so I hope many people <laughs> have taken my advice and read this book very so, nice. yeah and so, yeah so you have some other ones there as well right did you just you just did a redesign I think or did you yes yeah. I had the, um, uh, this February the first uh, warm letter in uh, 2017 that it had a small facelift um, uh, I don't know if you can see it here yeah. is the new facelift and here is the snail because this is a snail male <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this time it is uh, my 
um, my former Swedish mentor. Uh, she is uh, Anneli, and we had this um, event together where we gathered the people and we spoke for one hour each about uh, our topics. And it was a very, very good evening. And we also had food from a local um, cafe, mm -hmm. and they were very happy that I, I used their logo in here. Yeah. So that was, yeah. And one of the new things for, from um, from <laughs> 2017 is, of course, this. <laughs> Brandy! Brandy says. <laughs> so, so. What, is in, what is in that new section? So, so Brandy's your dog, which yeah. you had uh, last year. She's like uh, your baby, your new baby. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I had a tip from someone that says, uh, said to me, why don't you feature your dog? Because everybody loves dogs. Yeah. And so I have started out uh, trying to see our uh, ordinary days through her eyes. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, so here she is in uh, the car. Uh, she had a new, you know, seat belt for Christmas and she's going out with me on my my assignments wherever that's possible uh, of course it's not possible everywhere but um so i i try to be my dog in this column and speak about what uh, this uh, weird lady does that i live together with <laughs> so so um here she says uh I am always happy when my mom is happy and she's happy when she can help others. <laughs> uh, she has lots of value to, to give. Uh, so I hope you will say, um, uh, you will notice her if you need her help or know that uh, about anyone else that does. That's really cool. <laughs> I love that. I love that Brandy's in the newsletter. I think, I think it's so important in marketing to have a personal note and bring into you know, our, our own authentic characters, the things we love and care about. Yeah. People, people connect to people and, yeah. and that, that's what you're showing in, in that, you know, in that warm letter. Yeah. Do, do you have a call to action on your warm letter? Like, like something that says, if you want to know more, go to my website or how do you, how do you do that? Just for the people who are. I haven't had that uh, up to now, but uh, I did, um, uh, I did make more room for my contact uh, information uh, in the last uh, newsletter. And uh, it actually just says uh, contact uh, Hannah. Mm -hmm. And then I have my phone number and address and email and so forth but i haven't had any uh, anything uh, about you know downloading any ifos or, or doing anything like that uh, i maybe do that uh, in the future but um, it's i think it's a very fine balance uh, if you're going to have people love your warm letter uh, mm -hmm. then you they, they we are very sensible to being sold to yeah so, so uh, I wouldn't like it if uh, someone else uh, had a warm letter and sent it to me and I was feeling that they were trying to, you know, very hard sell, sell me on anything. Yeah. So I think I will keep it simple for now and just have this contact me if you need me and I will leave the, the selling to Brandy. <laughs> <laughs> Let the dog do the dirty work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, I yeah. Think a, I think that's a really good and valid point. You know, you want to keep it soft. You want to keep it um, in helping and being in service, and yeah. and not having mm -hmm. a too salesy warm letter. Definitely, I totally agree with you. Mm -hmm. Hannah, what would you tell the people out there who are maybe thinking of doing a warm letter um, on a monthly or bi-monthly basis? You know, the, let's call that a campaign. Like you're doing it really regularly because. Mm -hmm. Let's be honest, doing it once is not going to keep you top of mind with your clients. You know, it, really, it really takes a, a long-term kind of thing like that to be effective. But how, how would you tell them from a branding perspective what's important as far as how it looks, how it's structured, um, and, and yeah, whatever yeah. else you might think of? Uh, I think that uh, it's uh, good to spend some time on the looks, uh, that uh, it's consistent, mm -hmm. that uh, every time people get uh, this letter from you, they can see that it is the same as they got once before or two times before, because then you are uh, consistent and people start to notice that. Yeah. Uh, and your branding gets uh, across. And um, also, I think uh, having the same topics, at least if you not do exactly the same topics, Every time you can have 
like four or five topics that, that you uh, you uh, alternate with between them mm -hmm. uh, so people can oh that's that, that's that book thing again uh, you know <laughs> I have seen that before yeah uh, also I would advise people to uh, do uh, like I do uh, have this uh, you know set, uh, take notes and just put them away the ideas for the, the content mm -hmm. put them away in the folders so uh, you can just uh, do the letter when the time comes and uh, I am very fond of writing the name of the person with uh, my handwriting uh, uh, on the envelope because I think that's a thing that uh, make it uh, make the letter it makes the letter more warm it's actually very personal with the uh, with the handwriting mm -hmm. <laughs> but just on the front side <laughs> yes, like that's uh, enough. <laughs> last, last time in february i i um i didn't have any more uh, more you know the labels that said uh, hanna Brother and my address and so and i usually stick those uh, on the back the back side and suddenly they were all <laughs> gone and i had to write everything and and that uh, actually doubled the time uh, for the you know the the writing on on the envelopes so everything that you can in any way automate you can do that but uh, don't don't take away the the personal stuff and the the, the handmade feeling of it uh, uh, just just do do the, do those for because that's what people like that's what people uh, I, I get some feedback and uh, people uh, actually love to have something uh, in their real life mailboxes uh, that aren't uh, invoices oh <laughs> yeah know? Oh I my just, gosh! Yes, <laughs> it's not a bill. It's yeah, nice. No. It's nice mail. <laughs> yes. So so uh, that's uh, I have uh, I have had uh, lots of good feedback on on, uh, on that, and um, I think people like having my warm letters very much. So um, it's it's nice. But to keep it uh, keep it consistent. Keep it simple. Have the same topics and automate everything that you can automate, but not the things that make the letter actually warm yeah yeah that's a very good point and i think i think that was the point for me when i realized i it was i was ready i was kind of at the end of doing my warm letter campaigns because mm -hmm. i started writing them via hand and i think i started out with like 20 or 30 people and then the list got to 100 and then more and um at, at some point we just turned it over to a, a company that would you know print it front and back, put it in the envelope. We tried to put my signature printed out onto the paper and they have this sort of cursive type of font for yeah. the yeah. But it just didn't look as personal as before. And so that was kind of the point where we had done that several times, like for half a year where we decided, okay, it's oh. just the time in my business that to move over to pure email marketing. So that, mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. kind of a signal for you to know maybe when you're moving from, from one area to the other. Mm -hmm. Hannah, I, I can tell you from a client perspective, and I've told you before, like what that warm letter does for me, it doesn't just, it just doesn't just fill my heart with warmth to get a, a letter from you. And I, and I really like it. It's got a cool format. It's not like that standard uh, envelope. It's a little bit different of a shape. And I, I really look forward to getting it. It stands out. But what it also does is it reminds me to call you. It reminds me to write you an email because inevitably I've got some project in the back of my hand for you um, mm -hmm. that, you know, it's, it's something that I've forgotten to tell you in the daily grind of business. And it just is a reminder. And so almost every time I get that letter, I go to there and say, Tana, by the way, there's a thing that I'm working on. <laughs> can we get, can we get started on that? So it's a real, the real reminder to me as your client to, to get back in touch with you and get those mm. projects going. What other type of feedback do you get from people who get the warm letter? Like, yes. Uh, it's not like, you know, the clients uh, run down my door every time a warm letter has gone out. Yeah. But um, uh, I, I definitely uh, know that uh, the letters have uh, some attention mm -hmm. and I get very much feedback of, on email <laughs> uh, that they love my 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 news uh, warm letter and they they love to have something in their mailbox and I have also heard clients say like you that um, 
the letter uh, reminds them of uh, that that they should be in touch with me that they have something that uh, we we could uh, work on and and this is uh, mostly the clients that I have had and and um, you know that I work with uh, on and on uh, on a, on a regular basis so that's when they wake up and and remember me <laughs> yeah well when I was when I was doing my warm letter it, it was funny because I. I was doing more than the warm letter, obviously. I was doing a video blog and my e-newsletter, and I was sending out the letter. But what the warm letter led to for me was um, once um, I got a call from someone who was getting my warm letter, and she asked me to be on the cover of a magazine and write a seven page, do a seven-page article interview. Mm -hmm. Another time, someone, who, a corporate company, because back, back when I was writing it, I was doing solopreneurs and also um, targeting the corporate market. Yeah. Um, a lady from... Um, um, an academy um, who said we'd love to have you speak at come speak as a keynote speaker and she really was talking about how the, the warm letter stood out to her because of all the stuff that she usually got via email it was like the one real actual hands hands on letter that she got and it always mm -hmm. reminded her mm -hmm. she had hung it up on her desk and re reminded <laughs> herself to get in touch with me when the next yeah. Yes. Was yeah. coming up. Mm -hmm. so, so I get a lot of speaking events, a lot of um, like attention for, for, for like PR from it. So I think, I think the effect that it has is going to be different um, at different times, depending on the person who gets it, mm -hmm. just what happens to come up. So it, it, the, the letter's about creating, keeping top of mind and creating just different opportunities that may have otherwise just not have been there. That's the way I see it. How do you see that, Hannah? Yes, I think that um, you will have to be very patient because, um, uh, as you said before, it's not going to do anything with, if you send them one letter. I did that one year and nothing happened and I was very <laughs> disappointed. <laughs> but when I started to do them on a regular basis, then I, at least I have a lot of good feedback. Yeah. And I think that um, maybe speaking opportunities and, you know, things like that can come out of it because you you drip feed your your uh, people the things in a very warm and friendly way so uh, they will remember you always with a smile on their faces so it's not the hard selling it's not um, it's not nagging them at all so um, and I have an editor in my stomach you know, I've always done this. I was the editor of the school paper, and so, so it comes natural to me to to publish things. And um, so I think it's very funny. So I guess I will go on doing it um, as for a long time yet. Mm -hmm and see what comes out of it. Let's see what comes out of it. Well, I, I look forward to getting that warm, the next warm letter, Hannah. And I don't know if you're up, if you're willing or up for it, but what we could also do is like maybe add some PDFs to the bottom of this video for people to have a look at your warm letters. Absolutely. And, mm -hmm. Yeah, that'd be really cool. And maybe you want to just let them know where they can find you online if they wanted to see what, what, what else you're up to in your business. What, what's mm -hmm. your URL and where can they find out more about what you do? Uh, my URL is uh, hannesidea.com. Mm -hmm. That's my uh, my uh, website, and uh, from there you can go to everything I do. I guess <laughs> my blog is there. My everything about me is there. So, so I'm very happy if you would visit me on hannesidea.com. Yeah. Thank you so much, Hannah, for talking to us today about the warm letter as a possible keep in touch strategy um, to create opportunities in your business. And um, we'll talk to you again soon online. Yep. Thank you for thank you thank you for letting me be here. Bye bye. Bye, Hannah. Bye. -bye. bye.